Sup y'all, we are here for our weekly anchor message where we are taking a look at our spiritual lessons for the week. We are pulling from the Wild Unknown Archetypes and from the Mystical Moments Tarot. And we've got the Riddle showing up. We've got the Dead End. And we've got the Offering which I was excited to see some fresh cards. Like for the past several weeks, we've had like a bunch of repeats again and again and again. And sometimes you're just like, huh, when is it gonna be passed? When are we gonna get out of this moment? So we there's some movement here. So the offering underneath the riddle, we've got the hanged man. Underneath dead end, we've got the lovers. And underneath offering, we've got Eight of Swords. All right, you know what? I just heard the phrase, offering you a way out. Do you see that here? It's like this hand is like extending to this character and they're both in the night. Got the moon here, the I don't know if that is going to be the waxing or the waning moon. Probably the I don't know. <laughs> Not fully revealed though, whatever it is. So yeah, I just saw this in the image right then and I heard the phrase offering you a way out. So we'll get more into that. All right. So color wise, I feel like there's a lot of there's a lot of green and blues and like grays and darks, if you notice. Very cool colors. Green was in our weekly uh, energy oracle forecast, the heart chakra. Um, we were um, encouraged to work with the color green this week to enhance uh, the opening and activation of our heart chakra um, and also to enhance our creativity and productivity. So, uh, blue and green are both healing. They're calming, soothing, um, high vibrational colors, uh, which is interesting. There's lots of black and white and grays. And I feel like we're, we're getting through this like murky uh, uncertainty and we're, we're finding our own certainty. Um, and we're more comfortable in these within these gray areas where things are less defined and less laid out for us. And we're becoming, uh, we're strengthening our faith, right? We're, we're becoming more comfortable in the uncomfortable and the unknown. And so <laughs> in Pisces fashion, we have hanged man coming out uh, with the riddle. So we are in Pisces season. The Hanged Man is a Pisces card. And this is like, this moment is asking us to just take a chill pill. Take time out. Um, there's been all of this growth and deep reflection. And sometimes we can get so um, fixated on it that we can't see the forest for the trees. And so at the moment, I think for this week, Spirit is asking us to sort of just let go and don't feel like you need to rush forward. Just be in the present moment and surrender. Surrender to the present moment. Do not obsess over the future. Do not obsess over the past. And it feels like there's probably some things that we've been praying for answers about. Maybe help making decisions and choices or knowing that we have choices and decisions to make coming up and, and wanting more guidance and, um, and, and heavenly help with that, with making those decisions. So we may feel a bit of overwhelm and a bit out of our depth. And so right now, the best thing that we can do is surrender our, our ego's will an obsessive need to control and have exact answers and just surrender that. And instead, surrender that over to the will and the care of the higher self, which is acting on behalf and channeling the Holy Spirit to us, right? So the higher self is like the version of ourself that's 
totally connected and tapped into source and the Holy Spirit and the self that's fully healed and whole and integrated and is not fragmented. You know, the shadow aspects are, are healed and integrated and, and, the, and the, the higher self is like living in that dimension um, where all of our blessings are. And that higher self knows how to be the self that we need to be to get those blessings, to live in that version of the life that we live. Because that version of self is that self. Everything fully realized. No insecurity, no fear, no um, anger or hate. All Just love and certainty and faith, complete connection with the creator. Um, and so right now it's like, we're trying to surrender the ego self that is obsessed over the, the short sighted vision, um, and the, the, the self and the, the will and how we think it's going to be and how we think it should be. And so all of this is causing friction and resistance within us. And what we need to do is instead surrender that will and adopt a, a constructive will where we are open to the direction that God is trying to point us in, in order to align with this destined, you know, version of our, our life. And then when we have that knowing and we feel that timing is like, it's a now, right? You know, you go, go for it. And, and with an active constructive will, we take on the actions that need to be done and we like th like especially things that you might have been putting off like put those on your list and then just like make yourself do them and it builds this this uh creative will right and it and it's like when we leave these empty vessels around is what kabbalah calls them these unfinished things on our lists that we want to do that we mean to do that we know we should do and and all of those things, we leave them undone. Um, they're called empty vessels and they gather chaos, right? So we will gather steam and momentum and like excitement and get over the burnout if we can just knock out a lot of the stuff that's been hovering around and like cluttering our energy and our, men and our mental field. So that's something you can do right now um, to just sort of like take your hands off of the whatever you've been obsessing over and so driven to like to to accomplish and achieve like do something different or like take a break or like don't feel like you have to push and, and force so hard just take a time out and take a breather and shift your focus to some other things Shift your focus to things that bring you joy, that bring you bliss, that you're curious about, um, that light you up, that nurture you. And then while you're doing those things, it's like you've surrendered the stuff that you've been obsessing over, right? And the, the answers that you need and that you seek. And you're like, oh, you know, I'm so worried about this thing. I'm so anxious about it. I'm locked up. I feel frozen. I feel back to the corner and like I don't, you know, have any control, right? So instead, it's like embrace that, hang out for a minute, um, give up control, right? The hanged man is sort of in the same kind of like similar situation as this character. It's like they can both get out of these situations, but this character is very calm. They're serene and they're just taking a minute to get a different perspective. Like everything's upside down, but you see that the dancer, they're, they're hanging um, by the zipper. And so the weight of them surrendering to uh, this moment, it's like pulling the scene in the background open and you see a whole nother landscape coming forward and there's clouds and it's, and it's better. The energy is better on the other side. So it's like this moment is being given to us <clears throat> so that we can shift our consciousness, so that we can shift our perspective. And then it's like the, the knot will untangle itself and pieces of that riddle will just start to reveal themselves to us. So it's like the answers are hovering around. It's just we need to let go and stop obsessing. And as soon as we do that and lose ourselves in something else, it's like the subconscious will start bringing those answers forward or the universe will start showing us synchronicities. But first, we just have to sort of relax and let go and be within the moment. 
Um, next we have Dead End. Uh, Dead End is like, it's something where we just can't go any further. Like we've gone, we've had enough, we've come to our end with something. <clears throat> like sometimes this can be like say a dead end uh, job or a dead end relationship, right? Um, a dead end uh, career path or something along that lines where you get to a certain point and it's just like you hit like a wall or you hit a glass ceiling and you can't go any further. So this paired with the lovers, the lover's card, I mean, in an obvious sense, like in a literal sense, it's like, hey, going forward at, while we're like, okay, so for instance, maybe you've been wondering like an applicable example. Maybe you've been asking the creator, okay, what is it that I can do to merit like having like the next level of my love life, right? How do I merit meeting my soulmate? What, what work do I need to do to be able to do this? And say so you've been praying about this and you've been searching yourself. Okay, like what? It's not enough to just ask like that God shows us who our soulmate's going to be or when is this person coming or please send them my way. But actually start praying for what is it to, that I need to do in order to get the ball rolling? <laughs> like what is it that I need to finish or accomplish or um, do within myself and within my life? that is gonna get me closer, right? Maybe, you know, the creator has a project that you're supposed to be doing. Like, what if you're supposed to write a book or like, um, you know, create a product or a company or something. And if you met your soulmate, like you wouldn't do it because you wouldn't, you would be too comfortable and happy, right? So maybe there's like a task or something that you have to, to do right before, or at least get started and initiate it. Maybe there's something that you need to heal in yourself because if not, something about this person <clears throat> may be misunderstood or trigger you in a certain way that if you heal that thing, you won't, you'll have a different perspective. And so it won't cause the problems that your like wounded ego would take it personally and maybe cause you to like become reactive and cause negative behavioral patterns, right? So maybe you need to heal something before you meet that person. So say the riddle is like, um, okay, so let's let's just keep it that with that. Like, okay, I'm I'm calling in a soulmate. What do I need to do to merit this? And so then, like the lovers with the dead end, it's like we might be obsessing over this riddle, and it's like just let go, just get go do your own inner work, and you know, tend to your life and improve all of that or not improve it, but just like keep growing it and, and keep working on yourself, keep deepening your own uh, relationship with source and with yourself. In the meantime, figure out, like learn deeply within yourself, what, it, what are your values for a relationship, for a long-term partnership? What is your love vision? Um, what do you want from a home and life and those, you know, family goals? You wanna get clear on that so that you don't entertain people who are dead ends, right? There's no point in doing that. It's like, if you are really ready for long-term partnership or like marriage, then there's no reason to be like dating people and like, oh, I like them, but we're not super compatible, but like you still end up having like a five-year relationship. It's just like a waste of time if you're ready for that next phase. So instead you need to be dating to get to know people and then it's it's really like either like when you know they're a no it's like you just you know keep going so you don't keep going towards dead and people who don't share the same relationship goals as you they don't want like if, if somebody wants a relationship with you but you're not really that compatible it's like you you know it's going to be a bad choice it's going to be a dead end choice um if you are uh <clears throat> like pining over someone who is maybe they like you, but they don't want commitment or whatever. That's going to be a dead end, right? So make a better choice. The lover's card is not just about lovers um, and love. It can be, it can be about the, the, um, the two lovers coming together. It can talk about the divine feminine and masculine aspects of the self within coming into union. But also this card is about choices and big decisions 
that need to be considered with a lot of care and the choices need to be made from the heart, but not a, a, a heart that's been in pain or a heart that is struggling because that heart can mislead you and that heart can misinterpret because it, of its needing and longing, right? So we wanna come from a, a, a cared for, um, healed and nurtured heart uh, and we want to tune in to our long-term fulfillment and the long-term value and what is really going to be not instantly gratifying, but what's going to continue to be fulfilling for the long haul. And so like, say you're in, you're reconsidering a career or you're thinking about making a career change or a pivot, you want to consider, okay, what is it that I want to feel at work on a daily basis, right? What are my values? What do I want to be doing? What kind of tasks do I want to do? Um, how do I want to grow? What what do I want from this job? You know, and and what what are my goals here? And so it's like if you're if that job doesn't offer you those things, then it's a dead end for you. You know, and that can be different different criteria for everyone. It depends on what you want, right? Um, and what you need. So dead end and making important decisions. Now this dead end too, it can be like you've come to an impasse with something. Like think about when um, the character in a movie uh, has been going through the confrontation and like say they're trying to, um, it's one of those movies where like the underdog has to like overcome their weaknesses and get over their own bullshit. <laughs> get over their own toxic bullshit so they can be successful and victorious. They can win the big race, right? So at some point in the movie, the character is like, you know, slipping back into their old patterns and they're just kind of like on that train of self-defeatism and they might be just about to self-sabotage again when they're just like, you know what? I've had it with myself. I can't take it anymore. This is my breaking point. And that's when they really get determined. And they are like, they double down on their effort and then they actually end up pulling through and winning the race, even though in the third quarter of the last lap, somebody fell and it looked like you were going to lose but because you, you know, you really tried and you, you got over your bullshit, like you get to win and you, you know, be the star of the movie. So it's kind of like that. It's like, there's probably certain things at this point where because we're, we've come to the end of a huge big cycle and we're kind of in a, this big consciousness shift and we've been sort of up leveling and like having this awakening and coming online. It's like certain things about ourselves and about our environment and things like we're just not gonna, it's not gonna do it for us anymore. And we might have less of a, a patience with ourselves with certain patterns because now it's like we've seen them clearly and we're starting to see how they've held us back and we're feeling the weight of that. And now we're feeling like, oh, wow. It's like we have so much more power to break those patterns now. And the more that we see them, the more um, disempowered the pattern itself is. It doesn't have the strength or the, the hold over you that it once did. Um, <clears throat> yeah, it like it breaks the spell, you know, it, it, it breaks the illusion. So yeah, so this is like breaking patterns, um, breaking habits, changing your routines, um, just being like, oh, I'm just not going to do this anymore. <clears throat> there may be certain things that have, you know, d driven you crazy for so long, or like you may have been like angry, right, at a family member or something like that for so long. And you're, you've come to a point where you're like, oh my gosh, like I can't carry around this feeling anymore. It just feels like crap. I don't have time for this. You know, it's draining my energy. It's draining my focus. And I can't get, I can't progress in life. Oh shit. I can't progress in life into my next chapter until I decide within myself to, you know, ch make the changes that are keeping me in this dead end, hitting a wall, right? 
And there, it might be something where you're like, oh, I've gone as far as I can with this. And this is just as much as it's going to be. And that's it. You know, certain relationships that I've had, they didn't end because anything was terribly awful, but it just, you just knew that like we knew, um, that we'd done as much as we could together and grown as much as we could. And we'd graduated the relationship. Right. And there was just no, no, no more work to do together. And you're like, I can't go any further. Right. So right now, since we're at this Y point in the road and there are choices to be made and part of our growth is just being able to get past analysis paralysis. Right. I think part of feeling so overwhelmed and stuck and gripped with fear and like almost like despair and like, oh, can I even do I even have the energy to do like keep doing this? And it's like, it's because we haven't just made up our mind to be decisive and make a choice. It's like there's a fear of a choice because we're afraid of making a mistake and having to pay the consequences. But that's just a lack of courage and a lack of boldness. And it may be like what the lesson is right now is to strengthen our boldness and our courage and to strengthen our backbone and just be able to make a choice and own it and live with the the results and if you need to make adjustments then adjust but if you can't make a choice and you're stuck in this indecision then you're frozen and so you, it, you you remain on this dead end as long as you don't make choices so there may be big choices there may be big changes in life in your life that could be happening soon but they're going to require you to make choices and make moves and if you sit in analysis paralysis and you aren't paying attention to what's going on or you don't make a decision or you don't take an action, then nothing's going to happen and you're going to stay in this dead end. So being decisive and just owning the fact that you're going to have to make choices and big decisions and be decisive and knowing, okay, what do I value? What, what is going to bring me deep fulfillment? Knowing yourself is going to help you narrow down those options and not be so stuck. Because you can, you can tune into your heart that way. It's like you can give yourself some criteria to go by so that you're not winging it completely, wondering like, am I, like, is my heart deceiving me? Like, what's happening here? So you can say, okay, like, these are the things that I really value in my life. These are, you know, goals and, and things that I feel like my soul is called to, right? So you've got your values and your, your soul calling and things like that. And then the things that just fill you with joy, that light you up, that, you know, you have passion for. And so that kind of narrows it down right there, right? Um, if something is morally out of integrity for you, then that's a no. If something isn't in alignment with that, with those goals and those values, and it doesn't add to that, and it doesn't add to the joy that helps keep you inspired and nurtured to keep doing those things, then then it's a no, right? So when we know that something's a no, it's like then cut it out and stay in that vibrational integrity with the path that you're you're calling in and you're wanting to align with. Um, okay, and then we have the offering and eight of swords. Now, eight of swords is a feeling of being trapped. This is like the lighter, um, this is like Diet Coke version of the devil card. <laughs> It's less, uh, less malice, less foreboding, but uh, it's still, it's still a doozy. So with the Eight of Swords, it's like you've been hurt. You might even have been betrayed. You feel like backed in a corner. You feel trapped. You feel stuck. You feel might feel helpless. Um, you might feel afraid. You might feel fear and scarcity and lack and doubt. But this is like when you're just gripped. And you can't make a move and you're so stuck or you feel like you're stuck. And you feel like you are in a dead end that you'll never get out of. And you feel like you have no options. And what the thing is, is with the, the Eight of Swords is that it's really just an illusion. That you you have what it takes to get out of the situation that you're in. And that you've blown it up in out of proportion. It's not as severe as you think it is. With um, the traditional tarot artwork, it shows a person who's like standing on a beach in a puddle of water and there's like the castle on the hill in the background and then they're like kind of loosely tied up with like 
a blindfold and there's like some swords, eight swords stabbed around them, but there's not like, they're not completely enclosed. It's like they can just walk away and they're like, legs are kind of tied, but like loose. It's just like, it's, it's, it's just, it's not really that threatening. Yet the character is sort of being too passive and they're overwhelmed with the fear and they're not just calming down. And like, have you ever seen those videos of like a kid who's like thinking that they're drowning in the water and they're like, ah, 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 and they're like drowning. Ah. Like this is me in water when I'm not in water. <laughs> and then like the parent like holds their hand and the, and the kid puts their feet down and they're like in very shallow water and they're like, oh, I'm okay. It's kind of like that. That is this card. It's like, oh, I'm in very shallow water. I was overreacting. <laughs> this is like the time I was like hiking up a river and I thought there was a snake coming towards me and I was trying to get away from it. And it was like, I was trying to get really, like go really fast. It was like on all these slippery rocks. It was like in slow-mo, it was like in a dream. And it looked like the snake was coming straight for me, like through the crowds of people. Like it had my name on it or something. I thought it was a copperhead. And I was like, there's a snake, there's a snake. <laughs> it's like sliding everywhere and as it got closer and it did keep coming to right, right toward me I was like it's coming right for me <laughs> it was a stick <laughs> it was a very Larry David moment it was uh it was not my finest moment because I think there was a like an elderly woman nearby and in my panic I, I slipped on a rock and kind of fell into her and then tried to hold her up to make sure she didn't fall because like oh my god like that could have been like really serious for this woman my boyfriend at the time was like, you're knocking down old ladies. I'm like, no, I would never knock down an old lady. Oh, it was like Larry David from the Curb Your Enthusiasm. Okay, so, so there's this aspect of feeling like a little bit stuck, a little bit scared, a little bit backed into a corner, but really it's no big deal. We just need to catch our breath turn our attention elsewhere, take a time out, do some meditations and spend the week like just getting really peaceful. Changing your perspective, change your put like turn your attention to something else and have some fun. Mix up your routine a little bit. Um that kind of change can bring you inspiration, it can bring you energy, it can bring you answers, right? Where you least expect them. But like you won't solve a riddle by like choking it to death. <laughs> like ah, I I can't let go of this riddle. Like it'll never happen. You have to relax and then, and then the, the answer will come. And so the offering is something that we need to give up. Um, it's something that we offer. It's like a sacrifice. Um, literally like a tithe, a tithe is 10% of your income that you give to charity or a, a house of spiritual, uh, spirituality or like a source of spiritual nourishment. Um, it can be to like a charitable fund. Like I like to um, give money to Charity Water. They build um, wells in, in uh, third world and developing countries. So that's one that I like to give to. Um, it could be offering your time. Um, or this could be giving up something. Like for instance, I'm participating in the Lent fast, the Lenten fast. And I gave up sweets because I love sweets. I've got a big uh, sweet tooth and like at work we always have like sweets around that we're always just like <laughs> anxious like eating sugar and um, it's like a comfort go-to and so that's uh, one of the things that I usually give up for Lent every year and so because I knew it would be something that I would notice and that it would be like oh I want that so bad. You know, you want it to, to hurt a little bit. The, the more precious the sacrifice, the more power is revealed by the sacrificing of it. So if you have a grudge, right? Um, ooh, and it's hard to get over. <laughs> that would be a great offering. It's that offering that we put on the, the, the sacrificial altar that is going to help us get out of this feeling of this dead end and get the the energy going and get the ball rolling and make us feel um feel I don't know I feel the giving 
but we don't want to necessarily give just because it makes us feel good. You know, it's like we want to give for the sake of goodness, for the sake of sharing. But it is, you know, a benefit of giving. It does make you feel good. Um, you could be quitting a bad habit. You could be quitting like a substance um, that's getting, you know, is getting um, dangerous for your health. I am trying to quit uh, falling asleep at night after like when I'm watching like a show or a movie instead of just going to bed because there's nothing more comfortable than couch nap. I mean, if you've got like a good blanket going and you've got the right pillow situation, a little 20 minute couch nap can be so comfy. But it's causing me to stay up too late and then I'm not getting up early enough. And I think that if I shift my early, like my, my wake time to like much earlier, then I can start filming my videos before work. And I think that could change a whole lot about different, you know, parts of my routine and my productivity and my ability to relax and all of that. So I think that would make a big difference. And that is one of the things that I'm trying to offer up is like, one of the many things. I'm also trying to offer up my hostility and resentment and fear and um, evil tongue, and evil speech, evil lie. I'm trying to offer up, let's see, what else? My um, covetousness, yes, my jealousy, my feelings of injustice and, and being overly critical or my, my judgment. So those are the, the real precious things that we offer up. It's those parts of our of our ego our ego will that want to hold on to want to, I want my way. I want, I want the justification of my anger, of my righteous bitterness, you know? And it's like, no, that's the thing that's blocking you. That's the thing that's keeping you stuck, right? Um, maybe, you know, you have this, uh, you're overly cautious and you're trying to control every little thing and it's making you feel um, trapped in scarcity. And it's like, maybe you need to you know, loosen up a little bit and, and have some faith and not be so, um, have that scarcity mindset, right? While still being responsible, but you don't have to feel gripped in fear to responsibly, um, execute the same plan, same financial plan that you were in, right? Sometimes we feel like we're irresponsible if we let our anxiety go and we put our anxiety down. It's like, oh, so I'm not worried about this and I'm not taking my life seriously and I'm going to, you know, I'll surely die. And it's like, no, I mean, we can still take the actions that we were going to take and just try not to worry. And in the meantime, be happy and, you know, carefree. As long as you're taking the actions that you need to take, anxiety and worry is not going to help anything. It's only going to make things worse. It clogs up the energy and 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 locks everything up so that is all i have got to say tonight uh i hope y'all have a good rest of your day and i will see you on the next episode for our weekly manifestation oracle reading uh yeah y'all chill um have some fun do some different things uh, mix up your routine and try to figure out what it is that you want to offer up and whatever it is that you've been obsessively trying to get answers about, just kind of like continue to, to search, but in your heart, just be at peace. Like we need to come to inner peace. At the end of the day, it's like we need to have peace without, like without, you know, ourselves within our relationships and within our environment. But that can only happen or that doesn't even matter because it can be peaceful. But if we're still warring um, with ourselves inside and if we're still um, in separation and we're not at peace with something, then it doesn't matter if we're in a peaceful environment or not. So it has to start within and then you can have the peace um, on the outside as well. So bring, bring peace inside and outside. I eat y'all. I'll see y'all tomorrow. Ciao.